Now let us look at the layout of an essay. As you all know, that essay has three parts, an introduction, body and conclusion. So what is needed in the introduction of an issue essay? Let me tell you, the intro of an issue essay should always begin with a catchy phrase, a proverb or if you don't get anything, start it with an interesting anecdote from your personal life experience. But friends, very often when I ask them to start an intro with a personal anecdote, students end up storytelling in their intros which is very very detrimental to your issue essay. So please take care of it. First and foremost, just think logically what is the length of an intro in the issue essay. It is hardly five to six lines on the screen. So accordingly, even if you want to insert a personal anecdote in the intro part of it, see to it that you cover it up in not more than two to three lines. By and large, the point here is that the intro of an issue essay has to be very, very ornamental. It is the first impression and as you know, the first impression is always the best impression. So, the second important thing in an intro is clarity. Always the best scorer intros of an issue is very, very clear. They are very, very clear. Two things, when the examiner corrects your issue essay, two things must be clear to him or her. First of all, the examiner should get a feel that whatever you are writing is according to what is asked in the question. Secondly, he or she should also get a whiff of your stance or of your perspective, what your perspective is going to be like whether you are going to go for the issue or against the issue, these two things must be clear in the intro part of it. And last but not the least, high scorer issue essays often take the issue in the introduction itself to socio-cultural or historic backgrounds, which is very impressive and also fetch you high scores. Coming to the body, the body of an issue essay should be of three to four paras. Each para should highlight a new point or a new idea which is to be supported with examples, evidence or statistics. The body also has a very vital aspect of it in which the coherence of your ideas or the arrangement of your points is very very important. The strongest idea which you feel according to your perspective has to come first, the weaker in the middle and stronger in the end. And all the paras starting from the intro to all the body paras they should be linked with linking words or transition words like firstly, secondly, on the other hand, however, etc etc take care of grammar sentence formation spelling mistakes etc etc in the body part of it and the last para of the body if you have taken a single stance should be allotted to the stance that you are not supporting although this particular para should be of negligible length yet it should be inserted only in order to give a feel to the examiner that you are open to discussion and that you have understood both the perspectives very well. The last part of the issue essay is conclusion which only needs five to six strong sentences which summarize your stance and it often has to end either with a question mark or with an exclamatory mark or call for an action. So just as how you take care of the intro part of it, making it very ornamental, so similarly the conclusion, the end part of the essay also has to be very ornamental while ending. For example, whatever you write, you just end it with a question mark saying, don't you agree to it? 
do you still have the doubt things like that or with an exclamation oh what a sea change from past to present oh what a drastic difference kind of things with an exclamatory mark or you can even end it up for with a call for action saying that stand up brothers join hands do something for the motherland the motherland needs you etc kind of things so this is how you have to construct your issue essay taking care of intro body and conclusion we shall now discuss a couple of issues wherein students often not understanding the issue they land in trouble by deviating or digressing from what is asked or expected from them take up the first issue patriotic reverence for a nation often does more to impede than help the progress of the nation when this issue was given to a student this student ended up writing the entire issue on patriotism when the question means how patriotic reverence actually leads to obstruct the progress of a nation this word impede here gives you the indication how patriotic reverence is detrimental for the progress of the nation but very often as this student they just read or understand this particular word patriotic and end up writing the entire issue on patriotism instead of understanding what exactly the question demands from them so friends please take care of this that is a reason why i ask you to read the issue twice or even thrice till you understand the gist of it or you understand what exactly is uh, required from you or demanded from you so in this particular issue you are supposed to write how too much of respect for your nation could be detrimental if you rest on your laurels as it is looking at the cultural heritage or the richness of the culture or the history of a nation how you will just sit on the laurels and never try to progress or advance as is going on globally now this is what is expected in the first issue look at the second issue if rituals did not exist we would have to invent them we need ceremonies and rituals to help us define ourselves socially and culturally even this issue was misinterpreted by students when i asked them to write an issue on this because they just understand the word rituals cultures etc and they just end up writing on the different rituals the di different customs and traditions of india which is not needed here it is asked how exactly these different festivals rituals cultures help us to define socially and culturally which in turn means man being a social animal why he needs such celebrations or festivities in order to identify himself with his fellow beings this is a point that you have to highlight in your issue essay but often students digress from what is asked because either they are in a hurry or they are overconfident or maybe they are panicked and they just don't pay any heed to the question properly this has to be avoided always remember whatever the issue question is try to read it twice thrice or as many times it is better to write a short essay correctly than to write a lengthier one wrongly okay so please try to pay heed to the counsel here and next time whenever you come across such tricky issues and at times it so happens that you end up with a issue essay which is very dry where points on either side for and against side becomes very difficult to jot down what should you do at such times you have to end up going neutral in that case no need to take a single stance be very exam tricky and try to merge the two sides for and against in such a tactic that it appears to be neutral and you also get the needed word limit or the points that you need to construct an issue essay
So friends, I think this much information on issue essay would be of utmost importance to you. And in case of queries, you can always consult me on the web. We are always there to help you.